Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a pink lemonade ice dye. As usual, I'm going to create my spiral by using the microwave splatter guard and a hemostat. So decide where you want the center of your spiral to be, give it a little pinch, lay down your splatter guard, and then click your hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight. You don't want to tear a hole in the center of your shirt. And also make sure you don't press really hard on the table because you can poke right through the material. So I give the hemostat two, three, four, five twists, and that's it. And then with my opposite hand, I actually create the spiral. So you can see how I pull the fabric out and around and I'm no longer twisting the hemostat. And I go as far as I can using the splatter guard until I can't go any farther, and I unclick the hemostat, hold down the center of the spiral, and gently wiggle the hemostat out. Now, I like to secure my spirals by using rubber bands. I just find them to be quick and easy, but you could also use kite string or even sinew. It really is just a matter of personal preference. I got these rubber bands from Amazon, and I call them the purple rubber bands. And there is a link down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So make sure that you check that out. But I have found that these rubber bands are really universal for spirals. I use them all the time, and I love them. Once I get a couple rubber bands on the project, I like to tighten everything up, because right now you can see it's pretty sloppy looking. That's the downside of using the splatter guard is that it can only go so far, so it does leave a lot of fabric that isn't pleated up and tucked in. So I just pull on those loose tails and I tuck them into the nearest rubber band, and while I'm doing that, I also try to incorporate more pleats into the fabric. The more pleats, the better. I wanna take a quick moment to give a big shout out to Debbie Conrad. Hi, Debbie. Debbie is the newest member to join the channel membership program, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Debbie. Your proceeds and everybody else that has already joined, their proceeds go right back into the channel. That way I'm able to continue to bring content to you and to everybody else. So thank you so very much for your generosity. I appreciate it very much. All right, that spiral looks pretty good. So now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And I want to have two stripes of each color, so I'm going to be adding my dye and the pieces of the pie directly across from each other. My intention for this project is to leave a little bit of white space in between each color. I always start out with good ideas and then don't necessarily follow them all the way through. I'm just trying to make sure that I get a nice layer of the dragon fruit on there because I want it to have good saturation. I have zero intention of flipping this project over. Now when it comes to ice dyeing with hot pink, it's one of those colors that just doesn't ice dye very well. It has a tendency to want to just kind of like disappear. So I'm going extremely heavy handed with it. It's an absolutely beautiful color and it's one of my favorite pinks. It honestly is much better as a liquid dye than it is an ice dye. But you know, I'm an ice dyer, so what am I gonna do? So I'm just adding it, like I said, really, really heavy. When it comes to the yellows, I would say that lemon yellow is my go-to yellow. It's a primary, so it does not split, and it's really bright and it's super cheerful. 
And if you're brand new to tie dyeing, you may not know this, but when you work with yellows, a lot of times you will have what appears to be dye that hasn't dissolved. And I don't know exactly what that is. It's the components of whatever they mix it with. If you peek down in between your pleats, you will see that you have really good saturation, but you're also gonna have this clumpy stuff up on top. So don't worry about that. That's completely normal. I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Even though it's been pre-soaked in the soda ash bucket, I'm going to be adding a lot of ice to the project. So I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. That way the Procyon dye can bond with the natural fibers in the cotton t-shirt. These trays from the dollar store will leak after using them one or two times. So make sure that you place the entire project down inside something that's able to catch the melting ice water. You do not want to wake up the next morning and find that all of your muck water is on the floor. And then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. Do you see what I mean about the undissolved dye in the yellow? If you have to, rewind it and look at it. That's completely normal when working with the yellows. So this project ended up batching for the full 48 hours. That is just my method. It's what I prefer to do. So you want to start by using cold water. Cold water is going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. So the cold water gets rid of the soda ash and then the hot water removes any unbonded dye so it goes down your drain instead of into the washing machine. So from here I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener. Then I will put it in the dryer and I will iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our pink lemonade ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I absolutely love this shirt. It is so bright and cheerful. These pictures really don't do it justice. I know I say that a lot, but they just don't. The shirt is like glowing from outer space bright. It's so pretty. The, the lemon yellow has amazing saturation. So remember what it looked like when it looked like it was undissolved? That's why you gotta peek in between your pleats because there's more in there than you think. It almost looks like liquid dye because it's saturated so well. And because it's a primary color, it doesn't split. So there really isn't much to say about it. Now the dragon fruit is the darker of the two pinks and it's a really beautiful color. It's very similar to fuchsia red and it doesn't split. If there's any lighter tones, it's just because it's been diluted from the ice, but it's a beautiful color. And then the lighter of the two pinks is the hot pink. And I told you that it would disappear. So I'm glad that I went as heavy handed as I did because it did leave a lot of white space. Well, both pinks did, as you can see. And I'm not mad at that. I think having that white space in there creates interest and contrast in the shirt. Otherwise, it would just sort of be a blur of all the colors. Now, where the yellow and the pinks meet, we get a little bit of orange, and I just think that's super pretty. Like, I just love this shirt. I know right now it's, you know, we're going into Christmas time, and I should be thinking fall colors and winter colors. No, you guys, I'm making tie-dye. I want to see bright in your face Fun, happiness that's what it's all about to me so overall I'm super pleased with this shirt what do you guys think please leave me some comments down below thank you so much for watching please subscribe to my channel leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all that way you get notified of future uploads and remember have fun tie-dyeing